Hey friends and welcome back to the video. If you're thinking about building your next app with Flutterflow, hold on one second. Before you dive in, you should know the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to Flutterflow. I've been using them for the past two years and in this video I'm going to share with you guys the things that I absolutely love about this platform and the things that I absolutely hate about this platform. So let's dive in. Alrighty, so the Flutterflow pros and cons. So why use Flutterflow over any other app development platform out there? Well, the main advantage is that Flutter and Flutterflow are cross-platform, meaning that you can build your app once and you can deploy it to iOS, Android, web, and even Linux if you so feel like it, which saves a ton of time and effort and resources so you don't have to create three separate native apps and deploy them each to their respective location. You can just manage everything inside one code base. Now, just because it can do everything doesn't necessarily mean it's best to do everything. For example, Flutterflow is not really meant for designing websites, and that's because the underlying programming language Flutter renders things on the client side, not the server side. So it makes it difficult for search engines to crawl and scrape the website to understand what you're talking about because everything is rendered on a blank canvas and then displayed accordingly. Now, another pro about Flutterflow is that it is a drag and drop visual editor. It allows you to prototype pretty quickly just being able to simply click, drag, and drop your widgets onto a canvas. You get instant feedback and you get to a little bit of visual building as you go along. Now that does mean that it is a little bit slower when it comes to prototyping an initial MVP than vibe coding, so to say. Tools like Base44 and Claude Code can create prototypes much quicker and faster than Flutterflow because they're having AI do everything in the background and you can't beat the that. So Flutterflow takes a little bit more time to go from idea to actual functioning app. In my experience, you can prototype a simple app in about a day and a more complex completed app in about two to three weeks. Now, an another pro to Flutterflow is that Unlike vibe coding, where you're kind of just relying on AI to do all the, the backend magic, Flutterflow relies on you knowing the information, so they have extremely detailed documentation. So whenever you run into an issue, you can just simply look things up and get a pretty good answer. They have a whole YouTube series going over each and every like element inside Flutterflow, everything from what is a column to how to enable user authentication using Firebase. And on top of that, if you can't find it in the documentation, Flutterflow also has an amazing and vibrant community that is there to help you troubleshoot, answer questions, and help you pass a roadblock when you hit one. In my experience, whenever I run into something I can't find in the documentation, that's the first place I'll go. I'll just post that question there as these people have, and usually within about 24 hours or so, someone's answered it. Now, moving on to some of the downsides. This is a major one. Flutterflow has recently changed their pricing plans, and it's made a lot of longtime users like myself and other members of the community a little bit frustrated. People are even saying it's disappointing to see how careless Flutterflow has been handling their price and plan changes. Essentially what they did is they've locked a bunch of must-have features behind a paywall and then doubled that paywall to what we've already were used to. So a current plan was about $35 a month and this included everything like the VS Code integration, this included collaborators, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They've since updated that to be $80 a month. So it's a huge price increase and a lot of members of the community are not necessarily happy about it. This update will take place on September 18th when they officially change everything over. And on top of that, right before they announced this big plan update, they had some 
pretty bad breaking updates when they migrated their version of Flutter to a newer one. And this caused people to have a lot of issues with their apps. Yes, they announced it, but um, it, it cost a lot of people a lot of time and effort to fix their apps. Now on the bright side, you know, um, Flutterflow does have a ton of third party integrations, like I mentioned earlier, Firebase, Supabase being one of them. They have integrations with Agolia, Revenue Cat, uh, OneSignal. It really does take a lot of the legwork out of having to use a lot of these necessities and third party applications. Um, and they integrate pretty seamlessly with Flutterflow. But, 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 not all integrations are made the same. There's often a lot of outdated integrations that um, are not well maintained and require manual API calls or custom functions or actions to use the full scale of them. For example, like I mentioned Agolia earlier, the integration hasn't been updated in four years. It's still very much the tip of the iceberg and doesn't really unlock the platform's whole abilities to use AI search. On a little bit more of a positive note, Flutterflow has tons and tons of reusable components and page libraries that you can use not only in just one project, but across all of your projects to ensure a consistent design system. You can just see here, here's a couple of them. They have everything from authentication to lists, settings, um, even entire flows built out that you can just import within a matter of two clicks into your app. So it saves a lot of time and effort in the design side of things because you can just simply add what you need and you're good to go. Another pro to Flutterflow is that it allows you to have custom code. So you're not limited by this no code. You can actually add your own custom widgets, functions, actions, or even code files into Flutterflow and give your app the much needed customization when they don't have pre-built stuff. I use this in about almost every project. Uh, in this case, I was building an interval timer app and I needed some way to calculate the total time from minutes and seconds. And you can just do that really easily here. So the million dollar question, is Flutterflow worth it? Drum roll, please. My opinion, yes. But again, it depends on your use case and your preferences. Flutterflow has been amazing for the, these past two years. It's allowed me to prototype apps so much quicker than manually writing the code. But after these recent pricing updates, I'm on the fence on whether or not I should continue with them or I should look towards something different. Now, if you guys are excited to try out Flutterflow and don't know where to start, feel free to check out this beginner's tutorial where I walk you through how to build an AI app. I first walk you through the Firebase setup and then also your design system setup inside Flutterflow. And if you don't use Flutterflow and are using a different platform instead and really like it, feel free to drop a comment below. I want to learn what you guys are using and get to try it out and test it myself. So with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye, y'all.